SpaceX Starlink Generation 3 kits are now available. You don't need an invite. Should you upgrade? Should you buy new? Let's get into it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today, we have a little bit of dark temptation. Getting to the end of it, sad. So good though. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is gonna to be a technology day. We're gonna be talking about the new SpaceX Starlink Generation 3 kit. For a while there, it was invite only. Well, some people were getting it, some people weren't. And now it is open to everyone to purchase. You can go straight over to SpaceX's website or Starlink's website, starlink.com, and you will find them there. So the question is, is if you are a current customer, should you upgrade to the Generation 3? If you're a new customer, should you get a Gen 2 or should you get a Gen 3? Well, I'm gonna to try to answer those questions for you today based on your needs. So last night I was reading a bunch of articles about this and I wanna share one of them with you. I did an entire video, maybe I'll put a link over here about the positives and negatives to a generation three and how to set it up and whatnot. So definitely check that out when you're done watching this video. Also, if you're looking for more Starlink coverage, I have about 120 plus videos just on Starlink. I'll put also a link over here so you can go and check those out when you're done watching this video. And if you enjoy this content, even the least, throw it a thumbs up, that would be awesome. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. And if you are, click this little button over here so when I go live or when a new video comes out, you'll be notified of it immediately. And if you wanna say thank you for all of my hard work, there's a thank you button. You can click on that, give a dollar or two if you like. If not, that's perfectly fine. Consider becoming a member of the channel. That would be even better. And if you're looking for a VPN, check out the folks over at Pure VPN. They gave us a promo code, which is jchristina. You'll get 15 additional percent off or just simply use the URL, jchristina.com forward slash VPN. And one last thing is if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks, check them out. They are 100% free. Go to jchristina.com forward slash books. Now, we're done with all of that promotion. Let's get into this article and then I wanna give you my commentary on it. And then of course, down below, I wanna hear from you because that's the most important thing is you guys, not me just talking, talking, talking here, right? So anyways, the article starts out by saying, US customers can now buy the third generation Starlink dish without the need of a SpaceX invite. Starlink.com has been updated to sell the new standard Starlink dish, which cost $599, the same price as the second generation standard actuated dish. Now, before I go any further, I just want you guys to be aware that the version two have that actuator built into it, meaning that the dish will spin freely by itself, 360 degrees, adjust its angle to point to where it gets the best signal. Whereas the generation three is stationary, it's on a kickstand and you have to make the modifications, okay? Keep that in mind as we go further on. The article continues, the catch is that interested customers will need to buy the new dish through the Rome tier for Starlink, which lets you use the Starlink satellite internet system in more than one location. You're allowed to roam. The Rome tier starts at $150 per month, making it more expensive than the residential tier, which costs anywhere from 90 per month up to 120 per month, depending on your location. For me, I'm paying 120 per month. The Rome tier is also selling the original second generation dish alongside of the new standard dish. So what that means is if you bought the Rome tier kit as of today, you could select to get the version two or the version three the generation two or the generation three, one actuated, one non-actuated. Bear that in mind. Customers can also buy the new Starlink dish through the business tier, but the plan has an even higher monthly service charge starting at $250 per month. In that case, I really wouldn't do it. That just doesn't make a lot of sense to me because if you are a business class client, well, buy a business clash antenna, which is much bigger. You're gonna end up with a reduction or reduced rain fade. It just simply has more antennae <laughs> nodes in there pointing up on that 110 degrees swath of the sky that it's getting its coverage from. So that's just my personal opinion. 
A Starlink.com support page adds that existing customers can also buy the third generation dish through the Starlink shop, but they have to switch to the Rome tier. Keep that in mind. For now, the product is only available in the US, Starlink's largest market. The support page reads, quote, the Starlink standard kit will become available to additional service plans and markets over time. We do not have an estimated date to provide at this time. Basically saying that third generation is available in the US and it's available if you buy Rome, we're going to also make it available for other parts of the world and then with other tiers, let's say, or other packages or other plans going forward. We just don't know when. Hang in there. According to the FCC filing, SpaceX designed the third generation dish to offer, quote, a higher performance solution for consumers. And that's an interesting, interesting statement. However, the company has yet to clearly state whether the new hardware offers an internet speed increase. That's left some existing Starlink subscribers wondering if the product is worth buying considering the cost of $599. Makes sense. On the plus side, the third generation Starlink dish comes bundled with the third generation router, which supports Wi-Fi 6 and comes with two built-in Ethernet ports. The new dish is also slightly larger and drops the self-rotating motors. Instead, it's being designed to lay flat over a kickstand, like I said. So, the question once again is, should you upgrade if you currently have SpaceX Starlink? Or if you are a new customer, should you get the generation three or should you buy a generation two? And the answer to that is it depends. Let's look at it this way. They have not indicated as of yet if you're going to get better speeds with the generation three. So that's a problem for me because if you're not gonna tell me that you're getting better speeds with the generation three, why do I wanna get the generation three? Well, hang in there. There might be a reason for you. Now, the Generation 3 is better in some ways. Number one, it does have faster Wi-Fi, all right? So if you're doing a lot of moving of files internally to your network, that faster Wi-Fi is going to be better for you. It's also more secure because the difference between the Wi-Fi 5 that you're getting in the version 2 in comparison to version 3, which is Wi-Fi 6, does give you that added speed, better security. It also allows you to have more devices connected without bottlenecking and slowing things down. So that is also a benefit. Another benefit is the version 3 does now have the reset button like the version one did. So you could just push that to reset back to factory. Whereas the generation two, you had to plug it in, unplug it, plug it in, unplug six times for it to reset the factory, which was the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. Also, the generation two requires you to have a dongle. It's only like 25, 30 bucks or something. And what that does is it'll give you one ethernet port. Well, the Generation 3 has two Ethernet ports already built into the back, so you don't need that dongle. Now, this is my take on it. If the Generation 3 does prove to be faster, better, let's say reduced rain fade or whatever, I would say purchase a Generation 3. You do have to now, like they said, move into a roaming tier, meaning that you're going to be paying $150 a month. But that's okay, because as of six, seven months ago, SpaceX Starlink has allowed you to move from plan to plan to plan without being penalized, meaning that you can go from a roam and then purchase the third gen because you need to be in Rome to get the third gen. And then this next month, just simply go back to residential or go back to whatever your old plan was. If you are a new customer, all right, and you're trying to decide to get a generation two or a generation three, which one, I would say get a generation three and move into the Rome plan okay, which is $150 per month. And then the following month, go back to your residential. Now, you can do that as of like six, seven months ago, SpaceX Starlink allows you to move from plan to plan to plan back and forth as need be, which is fantastic. You will now have the third generation, which I think is still good. Now, if we knew that it is going to be better for sure, then I would say definitely go with the third generation. Absolutely. Because it does have Wi-Fi 6. It doesn't have Wi-Fi 6E, 
or seven, but it has Wi-Fi six, which is better than the Wi-Fi five, and it does have the reset button, and it does not need the dongle and all the rest of this stuff. So I would go with the generation three. Now, if you're a customer that's looking to upgrade, should you upgrade? Well, if you are currently bypassing your Starlink, right? You set it to bypass mode and you're using a third party router for doing all of your Wi-Fi, chances are that router is better than the Starlink router. If not, you wouldn't have got it, right? It's probably like a gaming router, maybe an AX router, maybe it is a Wi-Fi 6E or maybe Wi-Fi 7, whatever right? It's going to be better, most likely faster than what the generation three is anyways. At that point, don't upgrade. With the one caveat that if SpaceX Starlink says that the new dish is better, you're going to reduce rain fade, it's going to be blah, 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 whatever, then you might still consider getting the new one. But if not, then I would just simply stick with your generation two in bypass mode with your third party router. Now, there's one other thing that I want to point out here is the actuator to non-actuator. The actuator, once again, is in the version two, whereas the non-actuated version, which is the generation three, is just simply on a kickstand, all right? With the generation three, you must rotate or align it yourself manually, okay? Pointing it in the right direction. Now, in my 25 months of having SpaceX Starlink, I know that that thing has changed its orientation a good handful of times. That said, if I had something like a Generation 3, I would have had to go up on the eave, up on the roof, big tall ladder, and now re-rotate to be able to get that to point in the right direction. Also, if you are a new customer, existing customer, that has that dish, let's say on a pole, right? Maybe 30 foot pole, 60 foot pole or something crazy because you're in an area that's very rural and there's a lot of pine trees, let's say, and it just needs to get a good portion of the sky and you can't. Well, you don't want to go to the top of that pole or take the pole down every time you need to rotate it, right? That would be a problem. So in my personal opinion, if you are someone that can get to the dish to manually rotate it, all right? then the new dish is probably worth doing. But conversely, if you're someone that once again has the dish on the top of a pole, on the top of a roof somewhere that's very high, or you do not have the ability to climb the tall ladder, or you don't feel safe doing it or whatnot, I would say get the second generation and stick with that. Once again, it will rotate 360 degrees and tilt and all the rest of the stuff that it needs to do to get the best signal that you don't have to do it. Now on Friday's JC live show that I do, if you haven't been there, definitely come and hang out with me. 8.30 usually Eastern Standard Time. Um, a lot of you guys have said, listen, you know, I live in a snowy environment and during X number portion of the year, it's very icy and snowy. I would not wanna go up there to go and rotate or change something. So I'm gonna stick with the generation two. So it really has to do with what you feel comfortable with. Is the generation three better than the generation two? The problem is, is they haven't stated so as of yet. Once they do, I might change my opinion. But for now, I personally like the generation two dish with a generation three router. That's my decision. And the reason being is I don't wanna go up there and go fuss with it, all right? And until they tell me that the generation three is better, the generation two, my Mr. Bevel is gonna stay put. Now, would I pick up a generation three router? Yeah, and I might do that. I might change to Rome, grab a generation three router, and then change back to residential. So we will see. So I hope this information has helped you decide to go with a SpaceX Generation 2 or a SpaceX Generation 3 kit. If you're a new client or a new customer, or if you're an old customer looking to upgrade. Anyways, if you enjoy the content, I always say throw it a thumbs up. That would be very, very helpful. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools that I've invented for you and me over the years. And hopefully there's something there that you might like. Don't forget all of my teas and merch and everything else. Check it out, jchristina.com. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy. Happy holidays. And we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.